Hi, I'm Jason Calloway with Tomcat Equipment. And I'm John McLaughlin with Tomcat Equipment. So we're going to talk a little bit today about the Tomcat Hero, Carbon, and Sport. Common question we get is what makes your equipment better? Uh, we don't really like that. We're just going to tell you what we do differently and then you can be the judge whether you think it's better or not. Something to keep in mind as we talk about this carbon is that everything we cover is applicable to its big brother, the Hero, at 35 gallon solution tank and its little brother, the Sport, at 13 gallons. So the solution tank on this machine is a tank in tank design. So we use recovery and solution in one mold. Nothing structural is attached to it. We have three fill points. The first fill point is here at the front. It's an inset with a screen mesh. This is good for bucket filling. Screen keeps people from dropping things in there and ending up in your solution tank. We also have a remote fill hose here that can be plugged onto the end of a sink or a, a spigot. The third fill point is in the rear of the machine. So if we have to back into a janitor's closet or we're filling in or draining in a bucket, we can drain the machine, fill it here at this fill point, and watch our solution gauge at the same time. The next thing we're going to cover is the recovery tank. So the recovery tank on this machine uh, is 25 gallons. That's two gallons more than the solution tank. Uh, what we do differently here is that we start with a clear lid so that we can see everything that's going on inside the machine. The operator is over foaming or has too much soap, he can see that and adjust on the fly. We also use only one gasket for our lid. It's a push on, so it's easily replaced. And you'll notice all of our machines have these giant clean outs. So this is great so that the operator can rinse the tank out, keep it from stinking. Pull the water up through this hose here, and the first thing it enters is a drain saver basket. So the drain saver basket. Uh, is there to keep you from calling a plumber. If we suck up debris off the floor, instead of it ending up in the tank and going down your drain, it ends up in this basket. Now, we put a lower lip on the basket so that if we suck up a large amount of debris, it will actually fall over and not clog the hose. You can continue to scrub. Then we use a stainless steel baffle so that the water comes up. If there's any foam, it stays on this side keeping the foam away from your vacuum intake. Vacuum intake is protected, so we do a lot of steps in here specifically designed to save you money on vacuum motors. Vacuum motors are one of the most common items that fail on scrubbers, and everything from the baffle back is here to protect that. Large oversized ball float, come up and block the vacuum if there's heavy foam. Uh, then any air that goes into the vacuum motor has to pass through this white filter. So the filter serves two purposes. On dry start, it knocks dust down, keeping that from your vacuum. And then if we do get a splash or water or, 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 water or foam sucks in, it breaks that down and slows it before it goes into the vacuum hose. Now, most people, most scrubber manufacturers, vacuum is right there at the end of that hose, and that's the end of the game. We take it one step further to keep you from buying vacuum motors. At the bottom of this hose, that hose attaches to what we call the bando system. So the bandow is this, this piece here. That hose enters it. It's a large airspace with a baffle system to knock the water down. So how that works is that if we turn the machine on, some works is, so how that works is that uh, with the machine on and the vacuum on, I'm just going to do what you're really not supposed to do in the real world, and that is pour water directly into your vacuum, right? So now, with most manufacturers, that just got sucked through my vacuum motor. If you're lucky, it shot all over your batteries. If you're unlucky, it went all over your brush motors. What we do differently is with that system, is we've separated it. If the water's coming out of this relief valve, it cannot have gone through the vacuum motor. That is before you get there. We have stopped it. Now, let's say we somehow filled that thing up. 
we want you to know that too. We want you to know that you've, you've, you've sucked in that much water. If that were to occur, water would actually come out this blue hose on this side, letting the operator know that he's done something catastrophic. This is after the vacuum motor. So instead of just the vacuum exhausting into the machine, we actually put a box behind it that's specifically designed to capture water and keep it from going out. And that is the drain to that box. The next thing we're gonna cover is the tilt back function. So now we're gonna talk about the patented tip back feature John. on the Tomcat. Ah! <laughs> on the Tomcat Carbon, Payback. which is also applicable to the Sport and the Hero. First things first, let's go ahead and turn the key off and remove it. Then on each side, you have a hood latch. I've already taken the one off the other side, and then you can put your hands back here, tip the entire tank assembly back. The reason this is such an important feature on the scrubber, once I open these steel jaws, is it gives you great access to the machine, and it also highlights some of the engineering features on our scrubbers. You can see starting up front with the machine, we have a solid aluminum deck on our auto scrubbers, twin motors to power the brushes, access to your 500 pound capacity actuator. You can see that all these core components bolt directly to a solid steel E-coated frame. Heavy duty arms for raising and lowering your scrub deck. And then there are also turnbuckles built in that help level the scrub deck. On both sides of your deck, you will see levels. If you need to adjust the pitch on your scrub deck, you would loosen the nut here and here, put a wrench on this arm, and you can level it forwards or backwards. Before we move to your batteries, let me also point out that these turnbuckles are designed to be a failure point, a weak link on your scrub deck with the intention that if you have too many frontal impacts on the scrubber, these arms will, will fail. They're inexpensive and easy to replace. These being a failure point keep you from bending any of the more substantial steel linkage that's also bolted directly to the frame. Next we're going to talk about our tires, casters, and transaxle. The transaxle is on the other side of this tire. Tires are bolted directly to it. One of the things you'll notice on the Tomcat units is we use all solid tires, tread cut into them, bolted to an all gear transaxle. Your casters, it's a very high quality American made caster with a grease fitting. All those bolt directly to your steel frame. So your squeegee is easily removed from the machine by turning these hand screws, pop it off of the back. So now we're gonna talk about the central command that you would find on the Tomcat Carbon, Sport, or Hero. As soon as you turn the key switch on, it's gonna say central command. It takes about three seconds for that screen to clear and you get to the main operator screen. I'm gonna point out over here, first and foremost, is your battery charge indicator. Very similar to a cell phone. When that graph starts to empty out, that means that your charge is depleting. Next is gonna be the water flow. That's controlled right below this graph with this blue toggle switch. So I can click it up and increase my water flow. The machine doesn't need to be stopped. You can do that on the fly while you're operating the scrubber. The last graph over here is your down pressure. There's five settings for your down pressure. Directly below that, you see this black toggle switch with a plus and a minus. You're gonna click that up and that increases your pressure. This machine maxes out at 200 pounds of pressure. And there's five individual adjustments. This red light right here, if this ever goes on, that means that you have a clog in your squeegee hose or your tank is full of water and it's time to drain the scrubber. This button over here, once you have your brush pressure and your water set, this will drop my scrub deck. Don't worry, no water will come out until I hit one of the buttons underneath. And then this changes the screen to four hour meters. The top hour meter is key switch time the next one is travel, just driving the scrubber and not doing anything else. The one below that is scrubbing. And then finally, the last hour meter is your vacuum motor, the amount of time it's run. Your button hit again, you go back to the operator screen, your water set, your brush pressure set, your scrub deck's already down. I would rotate this lever, it drops my squeegee and turns on my vacuum motor. And then when you hit either of the buttons under the handlebar, the machine runs. Right now I'm using the red toggle switch over here for reverse. It's important to know that this is half of your forward speed. 
It's designed this way, so if an operator slips, your finger's gonna come off of the button, the machine won't pin you against a wall or send you back down a set of stairs.